over to the cloud. All right, well, welcome to the Augur meeting on this April 29th, 2024, the second to last day in April of this year. Seeing no new agenda items from, from y'all, I will just start with if there's any outstanding Augur 8 knot requests that we need to bubble up to the top. Looking at you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm just, um, I'm struggling with it's not letting me import uh, repos through the CLI. Right. Kind of digging at the API, trying to figure out how to do it. That's about it. Because I've, I've been digging at the API, trying to figure out how to extract uh, metrics. I've been digging at the API, trying to figure out how to put the repos in so i'm just i'm just digging and it's the case gary that your configuration it doesn't allow you to enter them on the front end right <clears throat> yeah it's i didn't install the front end because i don't plan on using it very much i'm using it basically to do the aggregation not so much for the visuals that you get from that front end but the other thing mm -hmm. is that uh it's not simple it's possible i can just do an ssh tunnel um, to set up the front end, but I thought that uh, that would probably be as much effort as just finding the API endpoint. Um, yeah, yeah, so. that, that 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 could certainly be. Do you need some help finding the API endpoint? Probably, it sounds like just just like breadcrumbs of which which things work because I would have thought. Well, yeah, I mean, when I looked at the CLI, I don't understand why it doesn't work, and so that's part of the problem. Is I'm teaching myself a lot about the internals. I'm just going to make a note to uh, configure auger to load from CLI or APIs to call. All right, Gary, I'll look at this right after the call. I don't That's think our agenda is going to take all the time that we have. <laughs> yeah, I was going to give a little, I mean, a non-update update on my end that the design, like figuring out a plan on when and how the design is going to get implemented for 8 Knot is still top of my priority list. Um, I'm just dealing with some medical stuff, so things are going to probably be delayed a little bit longer than I had originally thought. Yeah. Kelly, would you, um, when, when time clears, does it make sense to take a look at it together and maybe see if we can parcel out a couple of tasks for somebody in the community to try to take on? Not that that would be the whole plan, but we might be able to just see if, if we can lay out what to do, uh, how to help people do it. Um. Yeah, I think that's going to be, I need to look at it a little bit more. I okay. personally think this might be like a sec, that might be a secondary, what I'm like, what I'm trying to do with my own like audit is going to be, okay, what are like the huge like infrastructure changes on eight knot? that's going to be needed to make this work. I don't think like, when I say huge, it's just something that like is going to pretty much what is going to need deep understanding of Dash and 8 not to be able to implement. What I'm trying to do is figure out what all of those things are. I do those first, so then we can do all of that. Like anything that's not huge changes, then we can be like, okay, how do we parse this to be a community? And so, now that I actually talked this through, I think that actually might be a good idea for us to figure out. Like once I get the stage one, stage two, stage three, it, even if I'm working on the stage one, quote unquote, area, does it mean we can't start working on how do we parse out the stage two? So then once that's finished, we're like ready to go trying to get community members to help with that. Okay. I, I have a... Um... I'll report next week. I have a master's student who's defending their project this week, and their project is an eight knot thing. And the last thing they're trying to do is to try to implement the side nav. Uh, I sent him on a uh, a bit of a journey 
to see if he could just figure it out. So we'll see if he just figures it out. Uh, and if he does, I'll report back what we learned next week. Sounds good. He, um, yeah. that he's more than welcome to message me. Like okay. I'm it's like if he's if he's trying to go down the rabbit hole of eight knot and dash, I don't mind kind of answering some questions. I'm not going to give him all the answers per se, but um, the other, if he has any like directed questions, I'm more than happy to um, answer and help him out. That's great. I will let him know that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, any other auger eight knot requests? I feel like a DJ at a wedding. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, hearing none, I'll move on to the design from Lamy and Emmanuel. I don't know if there's anything new from last week, but uh, leave the agenda item here and see if uh, see if there's anything that Lamy or Emmanuel want to talk about or share with us. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So, do you want to have the share? No, we don't. Screen? We don't want to share. Okay. No, I don't need to share. Yeah. Um, what's new is the um style guide. It's still ongoing. Um, and we want to create some logic for the colors that we use in the charts. Um, I I said last time that we can use colors to um, represent different instances, but in chaos, I'm thinking that if we create some logic to and use those colors and when we need to create new graphs we can just follow the guide so for example now we can use a one of the darkest colors to represent the highest value in a chart something like that and um, so to Kali is this something that you already do when creating um, data visualizations the colors even matter at all or how do you use colors generally um I mean the implementation of colors on dash or on plotly graphs is done like i guess it's like whenever you look at like a bar chart for example a lot of times the bar is all one color sometimes i select which color it's from the color palette and sometimes i don't i would say the case where it's that the like a certain color means the largest value i would say a lot of our graphs i don't know how much it, I guess a pie chart that mentality works for those graphs, but a lot of times you're just looking at like plots over time. And so you're not, the colors mean like identify different part, like identifies maybe the action or maybe identifies how long it's been since a certain action's been done. But it, us it usually doesn't like wouldn't go directly to what is the most except for um for a pie chart and i'm honestly not 100 percent sure i would be able to like tell plotly hey for the largest um value on the pie chart implement this color they might have that functionality i'm not sure but um yeah there's we may be able to have some color connotations with it, but I don't know if like the the most value, the thing that's the largest value on a graph is normally going to be the fit for a color distinction. Uh, I have a, uh, I have a, sure. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Okay, yeah. Um, I was going to say, is it not possible for us to kind of show, um, it's better if it's visualized, then maybe she could kind of have a context to what we're trying to achieve. Right, not me. Uh, okay. Would would I think she's she gets it? I don't know. Do you do you want to see? Would like showing Figma be helpful? I mean, I think I understand what you're saying. If you okay. if either person feels like it, like I don't, then I'm sure we, we can look at the graphs. But I would just say that with the graphs that we have implemented, there's usually it's usually not like a value that's the most on the graph. It's plotting values over time. And then if we do use color distinctions, there's like different variables that we're showing with those colors, Let, um, not necessarily like which bar is the most. Yeah. Okay. Um... So 
So um, I'll just do like a, a brief explanation. I understand what you mean. And I guess maybe we'll just not um, attach any um, uh, meaning to colors. But okay, yeah, I think I think this is what Emmanuel wanted me to explain. So currently um, I'm using the value of the darkest color representing the highest number. But then some charts would um, have just one color, this one's for example. And then if I'm going by the logic of the highest value having the darkest color, then all charts with just one color would be red. Yeah, let me initiate your screen. Us. Sorry? Um, I, I'm the only one I can see your screen. Um... Okay, I think if Sean can click on um Lamy, can you just oh. click on Lamy? Oh, 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 oh. Right. Yeah. Okay. I forget <laughs> I about this. I, thank you, Emmanuel. I forget about this feature of this tool. I'm not okay. I'm not used to having the ability to follow people. It feels creepy <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Can you see can you see I can, I can't see you following me? Yeah, I yes. think I, yeah. I see we see what you're showing us now, Lamy. Okay. So this is what I was trying to explain. Um, I said the highest color would be the um, the highest value would be the darkest red um, hue. I didn't mention that, but if I were to go by that logic, then grass with just one color would have just would be just red, and it would look monotonous. And I don't know. So that's one reason we're asking about um, if. In logic or I know, yeah, I know when I, yeah, I know when I use matplotlib graphs, I pick a I pick I forget what they call, but I pick a color scheme from some menu of color schemes they provide, and when I pick that color scheme in matplotlib, which I know is a very different library than Dash and Plotly, it does sort of automatically create a range of color related to that that are corresponding to some value where it's appropriate. And the, the matplotlib library just kind of knows to do that. And I, I don't know if, is the question, Mami, if we should try to implement some kind of similar heuristic where a certain end of the spectrum always represents the higher values when we use colors to represent values. Um, so, I mean, I could see where that would make sense in some cases. But like in a lot of, to, to Kelly's earlier point, in a lot of cases, if I, when I look at these graphs and I remember how they're used in 8 not, I do think a lot of them are used to reflect categorical variables instead of values. So like when you look at the stacked bar, usually I see those deployed where each piece of the stacked bar re represents some different categorical variable. Uh, perhaps it's a type of action on the repository, or sometimes I think it's even a person. Kelly, I think, am I, am I, remember, am I thinking about the way you, you were thinking about it? Yes. Does that okay. make sense, Lonnie? So like it's a, yes. colors represent like a categorical instead of a absolute value. But you know, like pie charts is a, certainly a good example of where it would re represent well, those are often categorical also, but I see okay. I see the categories. Well, I'm talking this through out I'm talking out loud right now. On the on the stack bars, I think it would be confusing if the colors corresponded to a value because that would mean that the colors would change depending on which repository you're looking at the same graph for. And I think mm -hmm. that would confuse people. Oh yeah, that's true. I didn't think about that. So. But like in the in the um on the velo the project velocity one, that's the the sort of line graph of dots off to the right on what we're looking at right now. Those those often reflect individual things that they could that like whenever I see bubbles, that's often a good place to have the value you know, you can represent some component of data using color. So, like, I don't know all of the things that are involved in, in that velocity thing, but, you know, like the size of the bubble can represent uh, some dimension and the color of the bubble could reflect a different dimension and the position of 
the bubble on the, the graph here could represent a third uh, dimension or characteristic of the data. So in this case, the color can be used to reflect additional information. But yeah, guess, if, it, if, if, the, if the gradient was given, I would apply it anywhere I saw fit. I'd say it like that. I wouldn't say it's like a, if it's something that's like there and worked on and is, yeah, I think that's the best way I'm putting it is that if there was places where that would fit in, I could, I could use it or at least see if Plotly will allow me to designate like largest value, here's the color, because a lot of times it would be that the color would match to a specific like variable. And since the the largest value quote unquote is going to be dynamic with like since the dashboard is that would be the only thing i kind of need to figure out on whether it even can be applied since there's such a dynamic nature of what is quote unquote like the largest value hmm. um okay i don't know is is it something that can be I know that this is, I, I understand that Plotly may not have like um, a way to designate colors to values. And I understand why, based on Sean's um, statement, that um, it would mean different instances would have different colors for the same value or the same category, rather. But for the other kinds of logic that, that it allows, category logic for colors. Is that is there a way to document it or should we just um maybe plan for ensuring that for charts with just one colors, we don't use um one particular color, we diversify the colors so that they don't look all the same. Yes, that sounds good. Yeah, Don has a comment in chat that's um, worth noting that uh, the red, the red green scheme. Sometimes people do infer that red, red and green together mean Christmas, <laughs> um, <laughs> but also that red is bad and green is good. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we're trying to valence it that way here. Yeah, I think it's something that we can point to consider, though. Yeah. Yeah, I generally for any any metrics visualizations, I I generally try to avoid both red and green, um, just because of that association that people have. I think would would work on that. That's a good thing to consider. And I'm also not sure about like like red green color blindness. I don't know how that impacts. I'm not a not an accessibility person, but yeah. that, is a, that is a factor to consider, Lami. Is there are some um, color blindness safe color schemes? Yeah, yeah. We've not worked on accessibility at all yet, and yeah, we'll, we'll keep that in mind when we are reviewing our um, styles for accessibility including text. Yeah, Thank you me. might just Google the color blindness safe color schemes. I know there are some in Matplotlib and I I use them when I do stuff for work just because uh, when I was a PhD student, I found out that my PhD advisor was colorblind when I prepared my first draft of my dissertation using color. <laughs> Like, I can't tell the difference here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I remember building a website once uh, for a company that I worked at, and I had no idea what I was doing. And I was so proud of this. And I showed it to somebody, and, and he looked at me and he says, I, I, I can't even see, I can't see the text. There must be text on this website. And I had, our company <laughs> colors were orange and blue. And, and it turned out you shouldn't, shouldn't mix those. Yeah, it's a tell the same, same color blind problem. It also would have been really ugly, and I just didn't realize that. <laughs> Twenty year old Dawn didn't realize that she couldn't design things the way fifty some year old Dawn now realizes. 
Yeah, well, software engineers and design work don't often go together <laughs> either. <clears throat> nope. I was a sys, I was a sysadmin at the time. I just happened to have the skills to build web content. Does this help, Lamy and Emmanuel? Is this a useful discussion for you? Yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah, very much. Thank Excellent. you. All right. Anything else that um, anyone wants to discuss <clears throat> today? Otherwise, like uh, last week, I can give you your time back. Going once, going twice. Okay, I will give you your time back. And in the time remaining for this meeting, I will look at the CLI for loading repos for Gary. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. Um,